Johnson & Johnson recently received approval for their SARS-CoV-2 vaccine. We're going to talk a little bit today about how does this vaccine actually work and how does this differ from some of the mRNA vaccines that we've seen already that have been approved by the FDA. Johnson & Johnson is using a technique called an adenovirus vector in order to introduce their vaccine into patients. This is actually an innovative technique that's taking advantage of another virus, the adenovirus, and using it as the vehicle to introduce the vaccine. Adenoviruses are actually very common viruses and they are responsible for many of the common colds that we get every year. The vaccine makers are actually just using the outside of the adenovirus and replacing the inside with the DNA from the SARS-CoV-2 spike protein and then having that be introduced into the patient to induce immunity against SARS-CoV-2. The goal here then is that when you introduce the SARS-CoV-2 spike protein DNA into the patient, it'll get translated and transcribed into SARS-CoV-2 spike protein that'll be expressed in the patient and that will be used to induce immunity against that virus. This is actually an innovative technique that Johnson Johnson has used before for an Ebola vaccine that they actually have already gotten approval for in mid-2020. Johnson Johnson is also using the exact same technique to develop a vaccine against the Zika virus. And this general strategy of using an adenovirus vector has also been used by AstraZeneca and the University of Oxford in their SARS-CoV-2 vaccine that has already been approved in the UK. So how do adenovirus vector strategies differ from the mRNA vaccines that we've seen already approved by the FDA? At the end of the day, the underlying strategy is almost the same. The goal in all of these vaccines is to use the SARS-CoV-2 spike protein to introduce that into a patient and have that spike protein be used to induce immunity against the whole virus. In the case of the adenovirus vector, we're looking at using the SARS-CoV-2 spike protein DNA with the adenovirus vector. And of course, with the mRNA vaccines, we're using the SARS-CoV-2 spike protein mRNA using a lipid nanoparticle as the vehicle. So although the way that we're getting the SARS-CoV-2 spike protein into the patient is slightly different, at the end of the day, the underlying mechanism and the way that we're trying to induce immunity is almost the same.